To prepare for this action scene in John Wick 3, Keanu Reeves went through extensive training on stunt horses, including learning to hang off one side and flip back upright at high speed. Over a nearly 40-year career, the actor has proven himself adept at a variety of skills, from judo and gunfights to high falls and stunt driving. And in 2023's John Wick 4, he shows no signs of slowing down. Here's how Keanu Reeves performs some of his biggest stunts. In 2021's The Matrix Resurrections, Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss were actually able to leap off the roof of a 43-story San Francisco skyscraper with the help of wires suspending them 550 feet off the ground. I'm not doing this. Are you doing this? Keanu and Carrie Ann started training for the jump one month prior to shooting. They practiced on these body descender cables, which would also be used during the actual shoot. During training, they were harnessed in at progressively higher heights. On set, the rig sat atop the main skyscraper and was connected to a slightly lower office building across from it. In the end, it took about 20 attempts before they had the right take. Mr. Anderson. According to Keanu, there were more moves in just this five and a half minute long sequence where Neo fights off 80 Smiths than in the entire first Matrix movie. And getting it right involved a 27 day shoot after nine weeks of rehearsals. For this mid-air move, Keanu was attached to wires. And as the brawl progresses, more and more Smiths get added into the mix. On set, Keanu sometimes fought these stunt performers whose faces were later swapped out digitally with Hugo Weavings. By the end of the sequence, all the Smiths are digital doubles, as is Neo. Hugo was captured with motion control cameras so more Smiths could be inserted into the scene. To build Neo digitally, the VFX team took scans of Keanu's face. They then placed several high-definition cameras around Keanu that could photograph him from every conceivable angle. This CG form wasn't just a complete body replacement. It was also a means to extend Keanu's real moves for even longer periods of time. One of Keanu's biggest challenges in the third John Wick film was this sword fight on motorcycles. Thanks to dedicated stunt motorcyclists and impressive VFX, this sequence could be shot in multiple locations. These sections were filmed by the stunt team on the Verrazano Bridge in New York City. Because there were so many moving parts, Keanu's shots were filmed against a green screen. The soundstage and bridge action had to line up perfectly. However, the VFX team found the rigs were slightly off. So they went back and got the most accurate measurements possible through a LiDAR scan of the real bridge. But they couldn't fake the fight choreography. So Keanu rode a real motorcycle on top of this bike sled rig. The rigs were puppeteered by green suit performers who could move his motorcycle back and forth and side to side to nail this complicated bit of sword fighting. In the end, Image Engine painted out the green suited extras, added some extra flourishes, and combined the action together seamlessly. Earlier in the film, John Wick trades a motorcycle for a horse requiring five weeks of training in trick riding. According to horse master Tad Griffith, these sequences typically use specially trained trick horses. Legend, Tad Griffith. However, the horses would also have to move forward and run. So Tad taught the routine to specialized driving horses instead. Keanu was attached to a custom built rig at two points that could safely hoist him in the air. While the other two cables were attached under the saddle, allowing Tad to help move the horse forward. It also allowed Keanu to hang off one side and then flip upright as the horse galloped up to 30 miles per hour. To further maintain his balance, he also put more weight onto his stirrups. The safety of the horses played a major factor in prepping and shooting this stunt. Tad slowly introduced them to a motorcycle during training. Here, you can see Keanu practicing his routine on the horse, with the two motorcyclists trailing behind. And the lighting team added tracing lights to the rig so the horses would be used to the street lights on location. In the final shot, that is really Keanu and the horse racing on the street. But one more hidden feature, a 300 foot rubber runway on the ground to cover the asphalt and protect the horse's hooves. Just keep it steady. Oh, thank you for the tip, Ortiz. In speed, Keanu did a number of his own stunts, 
including this one where he attempts to defuse a bomb under a bus. Stunts this specialized required the use of 12 different buses, each with a different purpose. One built for speed, one tilting to the side, and a few to well blow up. For Keanu's safety when he has to go under the bus, the back of one bus was made out of rubber and the motor was taken apart from underneath and rebuilt in the interior. Special effects supervisor John Frazier built a dolly cart with brakes on the sides, which Keanu could use to control his speed. That cart was attached to a cable system inside the bus so the crew could pull him forward as they went as fast as 50 miles per hour. To fully prep for the Matrix's standout dojo fight and its wire foo action, Keanu spent eight months learning the sequence's choreography and four months training with martial arts choreographer Yuen Wu Ping. The biggest obstacle for Keanu, a neck surgery preventing him from practicing the fight's kicks. So for the first half of training, Keanu worked on the punches and lighter fight moves. Once he could kick again, the workouts consisted of non-stop kicking for 45 minutes. Because of this injury, his stunt double was brought in for many of the kick moves, and the choreography was tweaked to be heavier on the punches. Despite this, Keanu was still able to do a few of his own wire kicks on camera. On the first day shooting in the dojo, Keanu and Lawrence Fishburne did 21 takes. After starting over the next day, Keanu nailed all his moves in just three takes. For the opening car chase in John Wick 2, Keanu and the stunt team found innovative ways to turn the main character's car into a weapon. But it wasn't a one-size-fits-all solution. For this shot where John backs into another car, that was actually Keanu behind the wheel. He also drove the car for one of the takes in this shot with a major boost from the stunt and special effects team. In reality, the motorcyclist was actually a stunt dummy on a bike that was being towed. The motorcycle had a cannon mounted to it that would flip the bike over once the car door opened. For these interior shots, Keanu was actually in the car, but it was being driven by a stunt driver sitting in a pod above it. And this shot was created by crashing a real vehicle on location and combining it with shots of Keanu in a car in front of a green screen. When John drives headfirst into another car to take out this assassin, that was Keanu back behind the wheel. You can see his stunt driving knowledge at work. Here, you can see he isn't wrapping his thumbs around the steering wheel. Why? Well, according to second unit director Darren Prescott, that's actually a professional stunt move to prevent your body from launching forward. The sequence ends with some hand-to-hand -hand combat. Because of Keanu's rigorous judo training, Darren said that his moves were so convincing that they could get this wide shot without having to cut away to a stunt double. John Wick 2 aimed to outdo the first movie's memorable action with even more intense fight scenes, like this one in the catacombs. According to director Chad Stahelski, they treated Keanu not just like an actor on set, but a full-on stunt performer. In order to rebuild his strength two years after the first film, Keanu trained for four to five months every single day for four to five hours per day. This included a refresher in judo and jujitsu, which was helpful in these shots where he'd have to know the difference between grappling and striking. When it came time to shoot, the actor had 14 to 15 judo moves under his belt. One area where his muscle memory from the first movie kicked in, gun training. While he used one small gun for most of the first movie, now he'd have to alternate between a pistol, a rifle, and a shotgun. Through a three-gun training program, he mastered speed draws, faster trigger pulls, and transitioning between weapons. On the shooting range, he practiced building speed on reloads while correcting any malfunctions on the spot. Adios, amigo! Aside from this shot of Patrick Swayze, the movie's iconic skydiving was too dangerous to shoot for real, so the crew came up with an inventive solution to create the illusion of flying. Keanu and Patrick laid down on boards hidden under their clothes attached to these cranes. Because they were on separate cranes, they could move around each other independently. While that was happening, the camera operator sat on his own crane, which could turn with the action. How do you like it, Johnny? Amazing! Keanu added another skill to his resume for 2013's 47 Ronin, two-handed sword fighting using a katana. His co-star, Hiroyuki Sanada, taught him techniques and style, 
like how each blow with the sword should flow into the next one. One of the most challenging duels was when his character faced off against the late actor Neil Fingleton, who at the time was Britain's tallest man. Because Keanu was a foot and a half shorter than Neil, he would always find himself looking up while fighting. Take him apart. So Keanu changed up his technique to first go for his opponent's feet and then work his way up. Because the first John Wick had a small budget for an action film of its caliber, director Chad Stahelski frequently had to shoot action with just one camera. This was the case for its biggest action set piece, which takes place in a nightclub. Because there were less frequent cuts and longer takes, Keanu had a lot of real fighting to do. Being able to pull off this move was the result of four months of training in what Chad calls Gun Fu, the franchise's trademark mix of martial arts and gun work. Through this method, Keanu trained to keep his left hand open for grabbing an opponent's limbs as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat. His right hand was then free to fire a weapon. The nightclub sequence was shot in a real location with especially low ceilings. You can see Keanu actually running up the stairs here, but when he had to fall off the railing, the crew had nothing to safely rig the performer to. So instead, this move was achieved in separate parts. First, Keanu's stunt double, Jackson Spidell, fell over the railing and landed on top of a pile of boxes. Then Jackson was attached to a wire dangling him about four feet off the ground to match the fall before dropping him to the floor. How could John Wick 4 possibly top the first three films in the franchise? By putting the hitman back in the driver's seat of a muscle car in this epic chase around Paris's Arc de Triomphe. This time around, Keanu learned how to do a reverse 180. Some parts required the actor and the car to be put on this gimbal, but not here. Grabbing the gun off the ground and then firing it while still driving involved flawless timing and blocking. That couldn't have happened without the talented and prepared crew, but having a performer willing to work to make the action feel even more real is what brings the stunt to life.